Good morning, New Trail. Good morning. What a glorious and blessed day we are here today. Look out that door. It's a balmy 70 degrees looking at it. Don't it feel that way just by looking at it? But it's not bad up on the hill today. The wind's not blowing. The snow's not blowing. <laughs> we all give thanks to the Lord above. Amen. Waiting for Dan. Wow, we've got chairs, come on in, set a spell. Today, we're going to have to listen very, very, very closely because pastor stands on the whisper side. Yeah. Believe it or not, can you, can you speak loudly? I speak okay, well, I, I didn't say clearly, I said loudly. What we was wanting him to tone it down with the volume, he is toned down today. <laughs> Blessed that he is here, back from the hiatus of being sick, and like a lot of us have been. But we just praise the Lord and thank God that we each and every one of here come and fill up the chairs. We've got the sign-up sheets out in the foyer for supplies, and the list is there. We do need volunteers for cleanup. We did start some hard cleaning this past week and that, but it's an ongoing thing. This is the Lord's house. This is not our house. And what we do in our Lord's house, we give him praise. And having it in order, we give him praise. Regional conference is coming, coming, coming. We will have the host pastors and delegates from New Mexico, Oklahoma, and Kansas. Pastor Stan, how many would that in total be? 100 and 125. That's awesome. And maybe Texas. I guess that's it. Oh, okay. Projects need to be completed before the guests arrive, which they will be. <coughs> this opportunity for the sign-ups is out in the foyer. No, for it's not yet. Oh, it's not it's yet? It's not, but keep these dates in mind. Oh, keep these dates in mind. March 2nd, 4th, 5th, and 6th. Stay tuned. This next coming week, all of the chairs, green chairs and that, will be upholstery cleaned. And this is done by a good friend of mine, no charge. And the BIC Women's Retreat, volunteers are needed. If you're interested in being a planning team, please reach Mary Potter. Mary's information is on the board, phone number 785-749-1140. Is that it? Nope, there's another one. Oh, cool. <laughs> the men's gathering, 2024, which is this year, uh, will be in the world. It, where in the world is Will? Will. Is that like trying to find Waldo? Okay. Emmanuel Church in Abilene, and the information will be out on the four years later on? Okay. Information is coming. Is that it? I, I think so. <laughs> Let's raise our voices in praise and glory to our Heavenly Father and most graciously Jesus Christ, His Son. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand up and begin worship.
And Dave, you may be seated, and Dave said, my voice is going to be quiet. In your dreams, Dave. I'll have you know. Say what, brother? You got earplugs. Is that what you're going to do? You're not going to listen to the sermon, today. Are they ringing all the time? Really? Well, I want you to understand, I understand that ringing in light of what I've dealt with. It's good to be back with the family. And uh, it's good to be with you. It's good to see a good church full this morning. Praise God for all of you. Amen. And uh, we know many are still gone. Some are sick. I will have to say, though, I want to say very cut lovingly, your pastor hasn't changed. He does, still likes to give his congregation a hard time. Now, this morning, maybe it's the type of songs you just weren't as rambunctious in your singing this morning. 
you were a little more contemplative, I guess. Usually the walls are busting out and the ceiling's <laughs> going off and coming back down and we have to re-nail it back on because usually you're blasting it out of here. You're a little quieter today. But I know that we have a lot of people because part of our worship team is under the weather. And so uh, when you don't have certain voices, it's kind of all on one voice, basically. And so there she is. And so, But hey, we're glad to have you here. You're having a, having a good week. Mm. That was a little measured. Did y'all, are you thankful that you're alive and here today? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. And we're excited about what God is doing. And we're grateful for you, each of you here today. The Bible tells us, and I, this morning, as uh, uh, last night, and I'll have to admit to you that I overdid it a little bit yesterday uh, because we went down to Wichita for our grandson's birthday. And then we got, my son and I got back to Wichita, to K State last night for the next to last performance ever in Weber Arena. It was kind of neat. We got to watch in 66 years the fastest time in barrel racing was set there last night. I mean, in 66 years. And it was pretty, if you've ever seen Web Arena, it's all you can do to get a horse to take off and stop because it's small, small in there. But the record was set last night, so it's kind of neat to see it going out that way. But we were there. By the time I got home last night, I knew I had had a day. And I'm here today. So uh, we're here to praise the Lord. But the fact is, I saw Brian last night, Brian Sawyer and uh, Curtis Matty Bush, our pastor of our daughter church at, uh, at Saddleview over in Gary County. He is very sick, and so Brian is preaching this morning. And Brian sent me a scripture this morning, and I, I re this was very simple, and, and I said I had to agree with it so much. It says, it's Proverbs 18, 15. The heart of the discerning acquires knowledge. For the ears of the wise, seek it out. That's what we're here for. To seek, And it's not just knowledge to have knowledge. It's called to live it out. And sometimes that's hard to do, isn't it? Because sometimes it slams us up against the wall and we go, man, do I have to do that? Because <coughs> that's the biblical way. And so the, uh, God calls it that. But today we're here to be challenged. We're going to be looking at the anatomy of service. Because we need to understand how we're called to serve for the glory of God. And look at the anatomy of all that and what God wants of us today. But it's good to see you this morning. I'm glad you're here. I hope you're glad to see me. Yeah. Isn't that, that's not even fair. That's not even fair as your pastor. It's not even fair to say that even. You know why? Because that's selfish and self-seeking in my part. But I'm And thank you, Dan, to put it. In, did you hear Brother Dan over here? Brother, he said, we're not here to see you. We're here to hear the word of God. And thank you. Would you like to preach now and put me in my place? <laughs> Praise God. Well, hey, we're glad we're together to worship the Lord. We're going to have a special in just a little bit here and uh, because uh, I'm going to pray. And then we're going to do something a little different today. We've been doing more. And I'll tell you, last Sunday, I want to say something. I want to say, first of all, to Marshall, thank you for his preaching the last couple of weeks. Man, it's been great. And it's not because of Marshall. It's because of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> And that's what it's all about. And, then, and last Sunday's message, particularly, both of them were wonderful messages, but last week really was particularly powerful, I thought. And uh, also I want to thank the Lord for people listening to the Holy Spirit. As uh, I got to see, I, I kind of come on late as we did, and we weren't getting hooked up, and Laura and I talked about that last week. But uh, we got to hear me messages, and I got to hear some of the testimonies. I said, when a body is listening to the Holy Spirit, it's amazing what we'll let God do through us. And I thank the Lord for the two testimonies that were shared. One about giving, which we're needing to face that because we're going through some tough times right now at New Trail. But also, guess what? About when sometimes we need to be brought up short by the Holy Spirit. And we let God change us and work on us. And that's what the body's about. Working with each other, listening to each other, letting our hearts and accepting that and saying, you know what? Because quite frankly, some of you could say, ah, that's me. <laughs> that's me. Well, lie that fact, I want to pray, and then we're going to have somebody share a little bit about their story. Because it's good to hear the story of somebody else, of what God has done in their life and is doing in their life and wants to do. So we want to hear that. And uh, I want to pray, and then we'll invite a certain brother up here to share his story for a little bit. Let's pray together. Father Lord, <coughs> we're grateful for your wonderful grace. We're grateful 
that even in the midst of all the struggle we go through, you haven't changed. You're still the Lord. You're the, still the king. You're still the glory. You're still the power. You're still the anointed one. You're still the one who has seen everything before it ever happens. And you're just wondering, will we just say, God, it's all yours. And so, Lord, this morning, it's all yours. This church is yours. We are yours. And if we think we're somebody, Lord, remind us we're not much apart from the grace of Jesus Christ. But remind us that we know that we need each other. And most of all, need the power of the Holy Spirit to work within us. To bring the awakening of the Holy Spirit in our lives and hearts. To realize this is what the family's about. We love each other. We care for each other. We uphold each other. We give each other space. We give each other time. We give each other that what they need. But Lord, most of all, we give them the grace of the love of God. So Lord, may that be so evident in our hearts today. So Lord... I pray today that in this service, in this day, Jesus, you are praised and honored. And may we do so with everything of our heart and with every of our perfect being. May we give you glory. Lord, I thank you for your hand upon myself and the others that's going through physical issues. I pray by the Holy Spirit that you could, as we've just said, Lord, it's in your hands and we just declare and we want your healing. We hunger for it. And be free that we can be free to do ministry. But Lord, remind us. In that which we seem our weakest, that's when, God, you want to show your strength. May we stand in that today. In Jesus' name we pray. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, there's a brother here. I think that was Weston again coming through. Uh, You know what? Usually in churches in the old days, the Amen corner, the bench was up at the front or the side. Right now it's coming from the back of this church. And it starts the youngest, and so that's cool, that's awesome. Well, you know what, there's a brother in this church. He's kind of distinguished. He's got white hair. He uh, wears a sports jacket, comes here. But he's got a story. And uh, he's become part of New Trail. We love him. He's part of our men's group on Monday mornings. We value him. And Brother Don, would you get up here? And I'm kind of getting bossy now. Brother Don, get up here. I'll get you a mic here, somewhere. Which one? Which one are you pointing at? Oh, the one right back here. <laughs> Brother Don, it's good to have you here. Now, he's one of these men that just. Uh, oh yeah, he's distinguished by ca- having a cane. And so, about flipped the seat, didn't the seat, the, the step? You about went flying. And so, I'm gonna go sit down. We want to hear your story and what God's done in your life and what God did and what's going to do. So here it is. This is your mic, man. We'll, uh, we'll give it a shot. Okay, now hold it your mic because that's yeah. how we hold you. Okay. Okay. Uh, what was that? Uh, my real position was uh, back in uh, oh, 08, uh, 2005. I was driving a truck hauling agriculture and. Uh, Family wasn't doing real good. Wife and I weren't communicating. And, uh, uh, like a lot of people, you know, we're 20 years into our marriage and kind of uh, didn't think about each other a whole lot. Uh, but I happened to be down in uh, Oklahoma and uh, was going to drop off a load of grain and went to the uh, Red River Co-op in Hugo, Oklahoma, got there a little late. Poor guy that was receiving was uh, kind of wore himself out, asked if I wouldn't mind waiting until morning to unload, and I said, no, that's fine. So uh, he went ahead and closed up, and I uh, got cleaned up and got ready to settle in and uh, called my wife and, and uh, she asked me if I'd talk to Ruth yet, who's our her uh, cousin by marriage, um, a uh, Christian young man. At the time, he was a Bible thumper. <laughs> uh, but 
he came by it honestly. His wife worked for uh, uh, Creator. It was the guy that founded Calvary Chapel Church. And uh, she asked me if I called him, and I said no. So I said, I will. I'll get started up here, and I'll give him a call. And uh, so got my logs all put together and figured, well, I'll get dinner started. And I called this Jesus freak up and thought it would quiet her down and we'll be good. So I, I called Bruce and uh, I said, I'm, uh, as you probably know, uh, Carol and I are having problems with our marriage and uh, I really don't know what to do about it. I'm getting to the end of my rope. Sorry for the voice. Um, but uh, so we got to talking a little bit and then all of a sudden the conversation went to his wife and I listened for a little bit and I thought, wait a minute, I called him to talk about my life and he's telling me about his. But uh, the more I listened, I more I realized that my life was right on track with his, and he came out of it. But we talked for a little bit, and, and uh, towards the end of the conversation, he asked if he could pray with me. I said, yeah. Never had anybody do that before, so uh, so we started, uh, uh, he started praying, and I sat there and listened, and after a while, I noticed my head going down, and uh, the, uh, he started off with uh, the prayer for new Christians to invite Jesus in, and uh, I was getting kind of strange feelings while he was talking, and uh, he said amen, I said amen, and uh, said, I'll talk to you later, and he, uh, he hung up, and so I, I finished dinner, and I was getting ready to go to bed, just all of a sudden, something happened, I don't, I don't know what it was, I didn't know at the time, but all of a sudden, I got flooded with this feeling that uh, I was clean, away and I wasn't sure what it was at first but then my whole life started going between in front of my face and things that I hadn't thought about in years started coming up that I couldn't have brought those conversations up if I wanted to but, but uh, just for the sake of talking but all of this everything kept coming through my mind and I did a lot of crying, I did a lot of yelling, I had a lot of laughing. Uh, I just, <coughs> uh, I know it wasn't happening outside of my freight liner, but from the inside there were fireworks going out the windows and, and uh, stacks were red. But uh, once everything calmed down, I finally went to bed not bore you with sleeping. Um, <clears throat> so I, I got up the next morning, I threw the couch back, looked outside, and I couldn't believe how bright everything was and clean. And still wasn't sure why. Uh, absolutely. I, I couldn't believe it. Something really changed. And uh, so... I got unloaded that morning, thanked the guy, and I got dispatcher got a hold of me, and I went down to North Texas to pick up corn over at Unroost. And I got there a little early, and I went up, let the older gentleman, my age, uh, <coughs> getting to where I'm starting to admit that more now. But, but uh, he says, well, you're a little early. I said, yeah, I know. Um, morning's been kind of flying by for me this morning. I had a good meeting last night with the Lord. And uh, he 
he says, okay, I'll let you know when I get done with this guy and we'll get you over here and get you loaded. Okay. So I went back to the truck, you know, thinking, you know, things going through my mind and life events coming back to me. And uh, he waved me over and, um, and got me loaded up and went over to the scale and got done there and pulled off the scale, went inside for my paperwork and got everything all signed and ready to go. And, I said, thanks, and I started walking out the door. He said, wait a minute, you said something about you met with the Lord last night or you had a conversation. I said, yeah, I did. He said, I'd sure like to hear it. And uh, I thought, wow, that's weird. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll tell you. I got time. You got time. So I let him know, you know, this conversation up and out. And... Uh, he was a uh, a deacon or a leader in the in the church, and he just happened to be there that day because his son-in-law had to go set up a sprinkler system for somebody, and he was just standing in. Lucky for me, and uh, I think God just confirmed that this thing last night was for real, uh, and. Uh, It's just, I guess, <laughs> it gets kind of tight when I talk about it, uh, even now, after all of this. And that was October 20th of 2008. And, uh, well, I got done with what I was doing. I stopped and, you know, to get fuel and went in and got my wife a card and let her know what happened. And uh, I was planning on being home in the next couple of days or so. And uh, so from then on till now, everything's just been plus, plus, plus. And uh, my, my ex-sister-in-law asked if I'd come up to see Stan's church. And uh, I said, no, I haven't been up there. But the last time I was at the Cowboy Church was over in Abilene, and it was in a corral. Which was cool, but uh, so I came up here, and I'm glad I did. My family was sitting here waiting for me. And I thought, that would make me feel better, especially my Monday morning bed. Uh, you guys, I didn't know there were that many rabbit trails, <laughs> but, but we get through them, and. Uh, learn and uh, just want to thank you for welcoming me into your home. <laughs> you bet. Hey, Laura, can you turn my mic on, please? pray for this brother. You know why? We want to encourage him, don't we? That's what it's about. We're here to encourage each other in the name of Jesus. And uh, I tell you what, you know, you never know what God's going to do in a freight liner yeah. or a Peterbilt or whatever you got. Uh, I tell you what, God's going to show up when he wants to show up. And even when sometimes you're sitting there going, what in the world is going on in my life because it's falling apart. But God says, you know what? If you just turn it over to me, I'll put it together. Amen. Amen. I think a lot of us in this room, or probably the most of us in this room, if we know Jesus, you were probably in the same boat he was. Just a little different style, but the fact is it was falling apart, wasn't it? And uh, we just need to let the Holy Spirit. And so we love you, brother. We're glad you're part of us. But you know what? As Dave said, uh, we're, we, we are family in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And uh, let's pray. Father, Lord, my brother Don, Lord, thank you for him. We're praising your name because of what you did almost 20 years ago. <laughs> well, it was 808, wasn't it, right? I was thinking mm -hmm. 05. So, Lord, we thank you that it's never too late with you. As long as we draw breath, that you can take us and turn our life upside down for the glory of Jesus Christ. I pray, God, as you continue to dawn, 
as a witness, as a challenge. And we know, Lord, that because he's declared his word, I'm, I'm going to stand against it in Jesus' name. We know who the, the enemy is going to try now cause some problems because he has stood and declared before us. But, Lord, we're standing in the name of Jesus, and we're saying, God, you're the glory. And Satan, you have no part over this brother, over this body. We are declaring your glory and your power and anointing. I pray, Lord, that you just do your work mightily in him. Use him within this body. May we be thankful and walking together that we build the kingdom because it's about sharing the gl glory of Jesus as he's done. <coughs> Lord, I pray you continue to let him speak the story of his life to those who yet do not know the story of Jesus. And may you use him willfully and gloriously. We love you, Lord, and we praise you. We just thank you for his testimony today. We give you all the praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's stand together as we sing the glory of the Lord. And we'll hear, though we have guests this morning. We're glad you're here. You know, every cowboy church does different. Sometimes they actually take an offering. They, sometimes they do with the building. And, of course, the building is placed. Here we literally pass the hat. So may God bless you as you give it to the Lord in your stewardship today. Amen.
of that grace and the blood of Jesus that washes us clean. We have reason to give you glory and shout glory for what you've done for us. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for that. In the name of Jesus, we find glory of the healing in our hearts of the wounds that are deep. It's in that grace we find restoration that brings us full completeness and satisfaction of service to you. It's in the blood of Jesus, we look to the future with a hope that is unyielding because we know, Jesus, you're coming no matter what Satan's trying to do. <laughs> we know who's showing up and we know whose blood has already been conquered in Jesus' name. <laughs> Lord, I don't speak that way normally, but we you know we know that the cross, it was already taken care of. We know you're coming soon. It's our place to be ready. We love you. And now may the word of God be imparted to our spirit today. We seek you with all passion of our being. In Jesus' name we pray. And God's people said, amen and amen. Amen. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, I want to say something here. If you saw that Marshall and Elise's, uh, should I say, Brood has grown. It's been there all along. It's about to enlarge again. That's why Grandpa and Grandma have all the grandkids here on one side for Olivia's family here because hopefully today they're having another grand. Is it a granddaughter? Or do we know? Another granddaughter. So I think we ought to be excited about that for them. Amen? Amen. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Yeah, definitely. So guess what happened to happen this morning quickly? Elisa had to get me to the Salina. 
and uh, to get the grandkids so things could happen as needs to happen in a natural way. So anyway, that thing's exciting in a wonderful new birth. And of course, we're going to be looking forward in a few months here in our church, a new one too, that will be joining the amen section. Amen. Weston's going to get a new one in the family. And uh, so I went, Cody and Emily were so quiet about it and everything else, and we were quiet about it. And then it kind of came out. And so, uh, and so anyway, so we're looking forward to that as well. You know, uh, this has been an interesting week. I did not watch the Super Bowl because your pastor, I love sports, but your pastor is, finds it's wiser to not watch things he wants to watch, so he keeps his attitude, not attitude, his spirit calm. Does that make sense? I know me well enough. And therefore, but my wife, I love her. I will say in front of her, she drives me crazy sometimes. And my wife, in her gentle way, can drive me crazy. Because you know what she's doing? She's over here looking at her phone, and she goes, oh, I hate that. <coughs> I hate, oh. And then there's, ooh. <sighs> and then she says, oh, the chief scored. I don't want to know. <laughs> I don't want to know. I mean, I love sports, football, basketball, wrestling, because I've got sons who wrestled, and the daughter was a stat girl with the Abilene team. And I'm excited about Abilene because Abilene came from behind yesterday at, at the, probably the toughest regional in the state of Kansas and came back and won regionals and have four, state, uh, four champs and going to state with eight wrestlers and so on and so forth. That's great. Awesome. But the thing about it is, get through it all. And my wife then looks at me and goes, the game's done. <laughs> so then I don't care, because by that way, it's done, okay? I have to admit to you, I'm always the one who thinks the opposite way that I want it to go, okay? So I'm going, eh, San Francisco's probably, they're pretty good. But I also know what the Chiefs are like, and I know what Mahomes is like and all that. The bottom line is this, I said, just I looked at her face, and she didn't read. She had a pretty good poker face, but she, I know my wife. I said, the Chiefs won, didn't they? And she kind of goes, <laughs> just that's all. They won, didn't they? <laughs> yeah. In overtime. Really? I got a confession to make to you folks. I had gone to the kitchen. And I put, and we have Alexa. I said, Alexa, I made sure it wasn't too loud. I said, Alexa, what's the Chiefs football score? It was tied then, 16-16. I love it. It was great. I'm sitting there going, okay, well, okay, there's a chance. Because if it's that close, we know how the Chiefs are. They play in the cardiac moments very well. So anyway, well, they won. We're great. But what happened during that rodeo? Uh, no, so yeah, rodeo. That's where my mind's at. During that game is the fact that it was a commercial. This caused an interesting response across the Christian or unclaimed Christian world. It's entitled, Jesus Got It. Gets us, gets us. My son and I were talking about that on the way home last night from K-State. I said, Dad, I was going to call you, but I didn't. What do you think? I said, I didn't see it until Tuesday because I looked, looked it up and followed it. I said, well... First of all, understand foot washing was meant between to be for between believers first. It was meant. That's what Jesus did. Who did he wash the feet of? His disciples, didn't he? That's who he washed first. We are called as body of believers to wash one another's feet. You say, that sounds gross. Well, we're going to talk about that a little later on here. It doesn't sound very comfortable. It doesn't place the way I want to be because uh, feet are gnarly. They're ugly, even though you ladies put things on it to brighten them up. But quite frankly, I got two big toenails that when you had horses stomp on them, they're out in good shape. Just the other day, I was with my, my mare. I thought, I'm fine. Do something. What she do? She comes up to me. She comes very quietly. All of a sudden, something got her attention, and she goes, honk. 
to push away to look the other direction, and my foot was on her, under a hawk. And I'm sitting there going, girl, that hurts. And I didn't swear either. I, didn't, I just said, it hurts. And she's kind of standing there like, I want to see what's out here first. I want to protect you so you can't move, okay? No, it's all right. You can move. I'm all right. So I felt that wonderful feeling of my force on my foot. But as I thought about that, the servanthood, and then I thought, the fact is, as Christians, you know what? We are to serve those outside that are hurting. But when you use the phrase, it's what wasn't said that bothers me in that commercial. Because it leaves it ambiguously. And Satan is the master of ambiguity. <laughs> you say, that's a big word. We don't use it much in the pulpit here. It means he's good at being vague. He's good at being vague. But sets people up for a fall eternally. Now, I want you to know, I believe we in Brother Christ Church circles, as we are part of, the fact is we have practiced the practice of foot washing. <coughs> Ladies, slays, men to men. My dad and I oftentimes had discussions when my dad was alive and was in ministry, of course. He never agreed participating in foot washing when there was a denominational foot washing service at our conference. He said, really, foot washing is not that. He said, it's what we do for others for the sake of Christ that's dirty and filthy and messy. Boy, that's tough, isn't it? There's things that come along in our life that we have to do that sometimes aren't comfortable. There are things that happen to us we don't like. But I want to tell you something. As a pastor now of 43, 44 years, there's a lot of messy stuff. Somebody says, how do you do funerals for people that don't know Jesus? You tell them about Jesus. You tell the people who are living about Jesus. The hope they can have in Christ. I'm blessed this morning to have a new friend of mine here in the church. I'm not going to single that person out, but I'm glad they're here today. Where did I meet them? At a funeral. Of somebody, as far as I knew, now, I knew the sister knew the Lord. And so the family, but I did not know the gentleman. He knew the Lord. My place was not to put him in heaven or hell. My place is to share the hope of Jesus for them that are sitting in front of me now. And the comfort they can find in Jesus Christ. But sometimes that, you have to walk through some messy stuff. I probably realized, I told some, I said, I probably think because of, yeah, I went to Las Vegas for the national finals. And that was obviously COVIDville per se. And I get COVID when I get back, and I'm sick for two weeks. But before that happened, I, I'm out in a cemetery. It's raining, cold, it's windy, no tent. I had my slicker on, everything else. Doesn't really set your body up for good health, does it? Even when you probably didn't even know I was getting sick, which I found out a day and a half later I was sick with COVID. And then I've had two other funerals that were out in the open. Probably didn't help me. Being a servant for Jesus Christ sometimes comes with a me messy cost. It hurts. To be honest with you, some of you said, you probably didn't like being in the hospital. I said, you know what? I got to tell you, you know what my wife did to me? When, I call, when, I, when she called me for leaving the school that Thursday, because I didn't show up here. I had leadership council meeting. I was not up to it. I could hardly breathe. And I said, dear, I think I need to go to the emergency room. She gets the house. She rests for a second. You ready to go? She goes, oh, you're not driving yourself? <laughs> what? <coughs> I might not have been feeling good, but I kind of raised my hackles on that one. I went, uh, excuse me, dear. I, I was feeling pretty lightheaded, but I said, I'm sure I can make it. But I kind of like you go. But I'll tell you what, I'll never forget the relief I felt when I laid on that gurney bed in the emergency room. Crazy as it might sound. I felt, now, was I trusting God and believing God for healing? I sure was. At the same time, in the meantime, I needed help at the moment. And so, I was trusting others to do with my mess. And they were serving. She said, well, they get paid. 
Yeah, they do, but they have to deal with my mess. I was grateful to take the treatments and feeling better and so on and so forth. And then I had these two guys show up. Man, it's one thing to be in a position where you look down on people in the hospital beds. It's another thing to be looked down upon. Seriously. And I thank you for Lee and Randy that showed up. And they stayed away from me. They just looked at me, <laughs> talked to me. But I was grateful for it. It meant a lot. They don't know it, though. The fact is, even that talking, the fact is, I'm so tired. I was really ready to rest and fall asleep again as soon as they left. You say, what's happening to the message? I'll tell you what. Because people came in to be sure I was okay. They were my servants, so to speak, even though I was paying for it without insurance. But I was grateful for it. And we say now as we get back to that commercial again that we saw about service, and I thought to myself, you're missing the point. We're called to be servants. But the purpose of the servanthood is to share the hope of Jesus Christ and their need for Jesus. And they need to know of their sin. Now I want you to know, we as a church, and I know the last couple, three years since COVID, we haven't been to the bars. And quite frankly, they're starting to get a couple up. But the fact is, in the Abilene area, but the fact is, the last few years, there hasn't been any bars left hardly in Dixon County to go singing to at Christmas time and leaving the cookies and leaving the witness of Jesus Christ. But I'll tell you what, it was not our place. It was not our place to go in there to hammer them. Our place was to share the hope of Christ. I want you to know there was one time Terry was there and he saw an old barmaid of his. And they talked. His name was Mark. The thing about it is, Terry said it was just like old times. It says nothing had changed. Life was still the same for them. That's changed for him. The bottom line is this. We had to go into, I'm going to go into their mess. It's kind of the same old mess. But to love them where they're at. But I know Terry had the opportunity to talk to them a little bit about Jesus. Because he was willing to ask about this. I'll tell you what. That's what foot washing is about, is sharing about Jesus. Yes, it's washing feet, but it's eventually to tell them, you know what, that's the condition of your heart. That was the condition of my heart once. So anyway, we're going to talk this morning a little bit. I'm taking a little time getting where I want to go about the anatomy of service. If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Mark. sitting there thinking, where's my glasses? Not only have I been sick, I guess my mind's been gone. Where's my glasses at? Are they on me? Uh, well, yeah, I'll see. I have my case, but no, my glasses are not in it. Hey, Bryce, would you look and see if I left them back in the classroom? Oh, yeah, sometimes you do that, yeah. Math chapter two, Matthew chapter, Mark chapter 2, I started to say Matthew, Mark chapter 10. Of course, Matthew's in the same reference there. There's a reference there about this. Man, I can sort of see with these. It's a little hard. What in the world did I do with my glasses? <laughs> they back there? Huh. Oh, yeah. See if they're over there. I'll tell you what. Oh, my wife is, I love this. Folks, I'm relaxed this morning, I guess. I'm feeling really good this morning. I'm not on any drugs either. My wife is holding her big Bible with big print. Do you need this? <coughs> <coughs> yeah, dear, I do. I do. Well, I got these and so what too here. Thank you, Dan. Dear. Where in the world did I put my gla- I mean, I wore them earlier. Hey, folks. <laughs> Take, get my wife back her Bible. You know what? Hey, Dan, you getting worked out today? Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. <laughs> what second thing? What's that? What? What's that? Yeah. <laughs> Chapter, yeah. Oh, man. Thanks for your patience, folks. Chapter 10, verse 45. 
Now I want you to know something. We do not dare take a verse out of context. You know, they realize what was happening here is that James and John were wanting the special privileges to be in a special position when he got to heaven. To be on the, what side are we going to be on? The use. What side of you, Jesus, are we going to be on? <coughs> and he goes, can you drink the cup? I drink and be baptized with baptism. I'm about to be baptized with. In other words, the suffering he was about to go through on the cross. And he goes on. And of course, the ten of the other 12, of the 12 were upset because they heard them asking for special privilege and position. <clears throat> and it says in verse 41, when the ten heard this, they became indignant with James and John. And Jesus called them together and said, you know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. And their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant and whoever wants to be your fir be first must be a slave of all. For even, verse 45, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. What does the anatomy of service look like? Number one, it takes all of yourself to serve. Let's just dissect it right there. It takes all of yourself to serve. You cannot have any willful want and gain for yourself. It has to be all for Jesus, number one, but you have to give up everything of yourself. That doesn't come easily because we get pride in the way and then we get stubborn and we get nasty because things don't go the way we think we should or they should or we become somewhere along the way hurt in the process and I have to ask the question, do you have a servant's heart? A servant, remember, is one who willingly gives himself up. We're not talking about a slave. We're talking about a servant. Remember Onesimus in the book of, uh, as, as you look at the book of Philemon. There, there was Onesimus who had been a slave and now met up with Paul. And Paul says, hey, take him back. And guess what? He said, take him back. He says, he's now a servant of the Lord. But he's willing to come and serve you. Oh, Nisim, uh, uh, Philemon, he's willing to serve you. And the will that meant was this, that he would take his ear and there was an awl would take and he'd go to the framework of the door and they'd hammer, you ladies get, you know, for your ear, earrings, you know. This is getting a hole punched in to mark you as a willing servant for the service of the rest of your life, which means every part of my being is yours and I will do what you want me to do. I don't know about you. I, you ladies can get your ears punched. I, when I see these guys with these, you know, the lobe is down here. And then I see these tribes that have stretched their skins and done things to their bodies. The fact is, for some for worship and for some for the fact is that's their culture. I'm sorry. I don't mind a needle getting stuck in me, but I'm sorry. You're not going to drive something through me too easily. But I want you to know something. Didn't Jesus get things driven through him? Thorns driven through him. Spear into his side. His nails. Not nails. I call them railroad ties. Driven through his hands. His feet. Because he did so because he was willing to give up all of himself to serve, number one, his father in heaven. In our class, we're, at, we're looking at the Trinity. And we're talking about that, and I'm not here to go into that, because that itself is a lot of subject matter in itself. It's through Scripture everywhere. But the idea is that Jesus is God himself, but he's also the Son of God, and he was here to do what the Father's will was, and he did it, and he did it at the total sacrifice of himself. So the first part of the anatomy, as you decide, dissect and serve, is that you have to give up all of yourself to serve Jesus Christ. But also you have to give up all yourself to serve one another. I'll be honest with you. There have been times I haven't wanted to serve you because you have driven me nuts. And you say, well, that's not very nice, Pastor Stan. I want you to know, I have driven you nuts sometimes too. Because, well, there's a lot of amens on that one. But I have. Don't we do that to each other? And that's the family. The other day I was talking with Elisa. I said, you won't believe what happened to our family. 
we had a little, it was a Christmas time. We was our celebration Christmas. We had a little family row. And then I find out in Marshall Lisa's family, they're having a little issue. And then I talk to somebody else. And guess what? And by the way, it was Bishop Ron. And Bishop Ron said, oh, we have an issue between some of our kids, between themselves. And I thought, of course, I know good and well Ron is just as human as you and I are. But I'm sitting there going, Bishop Ron, no, surely not. Well, I know he used to go and struggling. I know he deeply he hurts because of a son who's kind of turned his back on things of Jesus. And it's now caused strain between two sons. We have forgotten, and this is, when we look at the fact that this is a family together, I love those mics and things. But as family, we often realize we've got to know something. We're going to have disagreements, but we're called to serve each other. It comes at a painful cost sometimes. It comes in such a way that it's not good because the fact is when we get uptight about things or we're not willing to yield to one another, it means you have not learned how to give up and be a servant for Jesus Christ. In days ahead, we're going to be calling you to be servants in areas. We've already got some of you serving and you're willing to serve. But I want you to know something here. We're called to give it all up because, first of all, we have been given a command by God to give it all. Because as you look in the scripture here, it says, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life a ransom for many. Then he's implying something here, that he is at not at his own command, he's at his Father's command. So dissection part number two is that this, we are to serve at God's command. Not if you feel like it. We are such a feel culture. I feel like it. If, if I feel like it. Excuse me? I'm going to take this trash and we'll dump it on and see if you like it. Because I'll tell you what, I told you to take the trash out. <laughs> I don't care whether you feel like it, you do it, right? And then those of us, when our kids grow up and they go away, guess who has to still take the trash out? We do. Oh, but what? But a, yeah, what a trade-off, yes. Lord, can you keep a kid around a little longer so they can take trash out for us? It happens. But the thing about it is, we, we're willing to do it, but the fact is, God's saying, it's not about what you do for yourself, it's about what you do for others for my name's sake. Folks, the church is called to be service. And I know I'm deviating, deviating this Sunday from what I've been preaching about as I'm preaching through the book of First Samuel's, we've been looking at Saul, and then soon we'll be looking at David here. But I want you to know something. we got to understand something. At New Trail, we are called to be servants. You know what's going to happen in a couple weeks, three weeks? We're having our conference here. We need to be servants of the larger body. It's say, okay, we're going to fix a meal. Saddle View is going to provide the refreshments in the morning and the afternoon. We're getting involved. We want to be family together. We want them to be part of us more. So understand, in the surgery, as we look at the anatomy, the dissecting of service, first of all, understands i got to give up myself, which means there's got to be some surgery on my heart, my spiritual heart. Boy, it doesn't come easy, does it? And But we understand it comes at the command. I'll tell you what, if you got the word that you have cancer, you say, God, I'm going to trust you for your healing. But he says, we need to immediately take surgery now. Would you sit there and say, well, he says, no, it's a matter of days if we don't take care of this. You'll probably say, what? Do it. Who wants a knife laid to him? I don't. But the fact is, sometimes we do. Because even though I'm not here to say the surgeon is God, the bottom line is this is that when the surgeon who sees or the doctor, the oncologist sees what's there and how what's happened, it has to be done and taken care of. One of the things Beth and I are going to deal with here in a few weeks or a few months here is the fact that we're going to talk to our hepatologist and to say, okay, can we go to Cincinnati for our denominational church, church conference because we're going to be longer than two hours away. Even though she's on the lower end of the list of a liver transplant, the bottom line is this. we got to need to know. Because you know what? The doctor will know best in this case. 
Obviously, we know that the fact is, unless her numbers suddenly jump up and stays in the high 20s, and suddenly we, need to, we better stay close by. We already know some of you are already on standby because if I go to conference, some of you are saying we're going to take her. Well, I will turn around and leave Cincinnati and come back. But the idea is this. The doctor is going to say now. And God gives us the command. The fact is we're called to be servants of his. But the third thing we understand now, we're going to be looking at some other scriptures, so bear with me. <coughs> it is this, that we understand we take, we have, it takes all of ourselves to serve. And it's at God's command. But the third part of the dissection of the anatomy of service is this. We're called to seek out who to serve. You have your Bible, turn to the book of Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. In verse 23. It reads these words. I'll give you a chance to get there because I don't. It's a scripture you wouldn't think it really fits with the moment, but it does. We're seeing instructions for the household, a Christian household, what God wants us to do. And verse 23 says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. You say, well, that doesn't say anything about seeking out who to serve. Oh, yeah, it does. Whatever you do, do with all your heart means you're going to be, whatever you're doing, you better do it to your fullest maximum ability because you know who you're doing it for? It's for Jesus Christ. Oh, man. Not for humans. I'll guarantee you, you're going to get abused. Bryce and I were talking, coming back the other day, we were somewhere and we were talking about how something had been a misunderstanding and how. A person had missed, he was wanting for clarification. And this person came back at him and just blasted him. Well, you know, sometimes what do you want to do? Blast back, don't we? Now, he realized that person was in a position over him. Even that person had to give it up because he couldn't handle it. But the idea was this. The fact is, we're called to say, okay, that person might not be the way they should be. Because I'm not here to serve a human. I'm here to serve Jesus Christ. Go, I know who I'm serving. You know, that person might have been, that manager might have been wrong in how he did things. And even though he had the support of even others, Bryce did. The fact is, he had to be in a position to affect it. Okay, back off. Because they realized, the fact is, he needed to still serve who he was supposed to serve. And that was the company. But the fact is, he really wasn't serving them. He was needing to serve Jesus Christ. That's who we seek out. We're called to do that. We're called to say, Lord, who do you want me to serve? Who? And he'll say, me first. But then you'd say, but God, who in two-legged form am I to serve? What is the need? What's the person? What's the place? Huh. Yes. It'll be washing feet of somebody probably that's not very clean. You know, uh, I've spent some time in the inner city, but not as much as I could. I'll be honest with you, I've had to work with my attitude sometimes in the inner city because of the attitudes I've seen. I'll never forget being with one of my dear friends in Washington, D.C. We walked into a restaurant, uh, not a restaurant, but into a grocery store, and I'll never forget. I just looked out of the corner of my eye, and I'm not going to say in a sense of racial profiling, the fact is, it was just... Wasn't a gentleman who was Caucasian. I saw that he looked at my, looked at both of us, and he had disdain for us. And he took his shopping cart, and he aimed for my partner. Before I could say anything, he hit my partner. No reason. Just because we were what we were. And I looked at my friend Daryl, and I said, Daryl, does that happen a lot? Oh, yeah. And this are his words to me. But this is who God called us to serve. Whew. People that didn't like him, couldn't stand him, even though he'd done nothing to him personally. But the fact is, he knew he was doing it for Jesus Christ. But he also said, Lord, who do you want me to seek? And he made a choice, he and his wife, to live on the rough side of D.C., and to minister to people in their absolute brokenness. 
and vileness of attitude. Because how would others, they know Jesus. My wife and I, was, we were part of Mid-American Nazarene University years ago, of course, in college. There was a, profe- a gentleman, a pastor of a Nazarene church in D.C., Tom Neese. A very affluent church that God called him to leave the affluency of the pastorate of that church and to live in the slums of D.C., which, by the way, there are more black people that live in the slum-like life than with the, all the people of Swaziland. Look up Swaziland in Africa. And I'll never forget the day before our cha- the chapel service, he came and spoke to us. They said, I heard a yelling outside, and there was a man been stabbed many times outside my door. And I went out, and I recognized him. He didn't know him a lot, a lot for a long time, but he'd come to know him a little bit. He said, he died in my arms. 